Under the Speaker's announced policy of January 18, 2007, the Chair recognizes the gentleman from California, Mr. Rohrbacher, for 60 minutes. Thank you very much. Uh, Madam Speaker, a tsunami of illegal aliens is sweeping into our country, crowding our classrooms, closing our hospital emergency rooms, unleashing violent crime, and driving down wages. This is not theory. It is a harsh, threatening reality borne out not by numerous academic studies, but by the life experiences of the American families from California to Georgia, from Iowa to New Jersey. Our middle class is being destroyed. Our communities are not safe. Our social service infrastructure is collapsing, and yes, it has everything to do with illegal immigration. Illegal immigration, which is out of control. And year after year, while our schools deteriorate and our jails fill and our hospital emergency rooms shut down, the elite in this country turns a blind eye to the disaster that is befalling the rest of us, their fellow Americans. The elites obscure the issue and maneuver to keep in place policies that reward illegal immigrants with jobs and benefits, and now, of course, being rewarded with citizenship. This country, the upper class says, can't function without cheap labor. Well, cheap to the captains of industry and the political elite, but painfully expensive to America's middle class. It's our kids whose education is being diminished, our families who are paying thousands more in health insurance to make up for the hospital costs of giving free service to illegals. It's our neighborhoods who suffer from crime perpetuated by criminals transported here from other countries. And yes, our livelihoods are being dragged down as wages are depressed and anchored down by a constant influx of immigrants, mostly illegal, some with H-1B visas willing to work at a pittance. Big business, with its hold on the GOP, in an unholy alliance with the liberal left coalition that controls the Democratic Party, have been responsible for this invasion of our country, this attack on the well-being of our people. <clears throat> this coalition gives the jobs and passes out the benefits that lured tens of millions of illegals to our country. It's no accident. This predicament was predictable. It's been over 20 years of bad policy in the making. If you give jobs and benefits, the masses of people over there will do anything to get over here. And that's what we've been doing. Give it and they will come. Surprise, surprise. Now, the out-of-touch elite has introduced yet another piece of legislation. This so-called comprehensive reform bill that they claim will fix our illegal immigration crisis once and for all. Of course, this is a crisis they created. They are trumpeting the, new, the supposedly new enforcement measures and security measures that will be initiated in this bill. The border fence, new agents, new employer sanctions, if only we will swallow hard and give amnesty to those lawbreakers who are already here. Like Lucy holding out the football for Charlie Brown to kick, the bill is yet another effort to trick us. It's an illusion, a scam that will make things worse, not better. The Senate legislation now being touted by Senator Kennedy and a few Republican senators immediately legalizes the status of 15 to 20 million illegals while offering more border control, yes, fences and border patrol agents and such as sweeteners aimed at getting us to accept this deal. But we've already passed legislation addressing border security. It's already in the law. 
It's already against the law, for example, to hire illegals. We've already mandated a stronger fence and more border patrol agents. So in reality, this legislation isn't about those other things which they're trying to get us to support the legislation about. This is only about legalizing the status of 15 to 20 million illegals and then finding new ways to get more immigrants into our country. It has nothing to do with controlling the flow of illegals and in controlling the flow of immigrants into our country as much as it is expanding the number of immigrants, legal and illegal, coming into our country. In such situations, as we find ourselves in today with this legislation, it's fashionable on Capitol Hill to say the devil is in the details. And this bill has enough demons to open up a whole new level of hell. Let's start first and foremost with the most obvious lie, the claim that this bill does not give amnesty to illegal aliens. President Bush has done a great damage to his credibility by playing such word games. My friends, the first thing this bill does is legalize 15 to 20 million people who, are now, illeg who now illegally reside in our country. I don't care what the president calls it. It immediately legalizes the status of millions who are here illegally. Under the proposed legislation, this amnesty, and that's exactly what it is, is now called a, probati a probationary Z visa. Upon passage of this bill, every illegal alien who can claim they were here in the United States by January 1st of 2007 can apply for a probationary Z visa that grants them immediate legal status to be in the United States. Listen carefully. Immediately upon this bill's passage, there is no waiting for triggers or clarification or bureaucratic benchmarks. It is their status is immediately legalized. It is very straightforward. These probationary visas are available immediately upon the passage of this bill. 15 or 20 million illegals immediately legalized in their status here. What message does this send to the 100 million or so people who are waiting overseas? The 15 to 20 million newly legalized immigrants will be quickly followed by 50 to 100 million more illegals flooding our system beyond the point of return. If we let that happen, this will be a catastrophic, uh, a catastrophic event of historic proportions. More importantly, for the American people, it will be a calamity for, for their communities and for their families. According to this so-called immigration reform bill, how does an illegal become legal? Well, first of all, a temporary right off the bat becomes legal once this bill passes. Very simple. If he wants to make himself legal, then beyond that, he or she walks in and applies. Or she, he or she just has, they don't have to pay back taxes. They don't have to do anything else. If this bill passes, he or she doesn't have to go through health checks. They don't have to have any other process, they will be granted immediately after the passage of this bill legal status to be here. Legal status that is supposedly temporary. Supposedly. The illegal pays a fine of $1,000 for this probationary visa. Not the $5,000 that we've all heard about. It's $1,000. And for $1,000, one can obtain the legal right to work in this country, to participate in our social security system, to be protected by our laws, and given benefits from our government. A plenty good bargain for them. But for the taxpayers, it's worse than a raw deal. Yes, out of the shadows will come 15 to 20 million people who will now be demanding equal rights to live here freely, to get, the, to get jobs, to consume resources that they are not now entitled to consume because they are now here illegally. There is another detail that makes this process dangerous and unworkable. The government, according to this legislation, 
has only one business day to act once an application has been submitted, and that is just one day to look over that application and to approve it. After one business day, that's 24 hours, the government must issue the amnesty to that applicant. Is there anyone who doesn't understand that this means huge numbers of criminals and, yes, terrorists who will obtain the legal right to live and work here in the United States under this rule because of this legislation? One day to oversee this applicant? One needs to ask who is writing such obvious insanity into federal legislation. Obviously, who is ever insisting on a one-day review that must be followed by, by an approval if one doesn't object, a one-day review, obviously the person who's advocating this doesn't care about us at all. He's looking to make sure that we treat those people who are in this country legally better. This person obviously doesn't care who's written this into our federal law, or is trying to, doesn't care if Americans are victimized by criminals who should never have been permitted to come here, but will come here because we're only requiring one day to determine if they can be approved or not. Now, you think that criminals throughout the world and even terrorists don't see this as a vulnerability? Who's trying to foist this off on us? Who's trying to write this into federal law? They're not watching out for the interests of the American people. This Z visa gives illegal aliens exactly what they want, the legal right to work in the United States. And the Z visa is renewable every four years without limits. The way this bill is written, you can live in the United States until you die by renewing your Z visa every four years. Fellow Americans who love this country, word games aside, this is amnesty of the worst possible sort. Millions of illegals who broke the law will be granted legal status and can stay in this country as long as they please. In fact, I predict millions of people who are currently holding, holding valid student and tourist visas will immediately apply for the, v, for the Z visa. And why not? Student and tourist visas expire. The Z visa won't expire every four years. You can just renew it. Only if the alien wishes to become a citizen do the increased fines, that $5,000 we've heard about, only if they want to become a citizen do these fines and other requirements come into play. No serious person in the immigration reform movement has ever said that it is citizenship that defines amnesty. Amnesty is not being held, uh, not being held to account for breaking the law. This Z visa goes beyond not punishing lawbreakers. It actually rewards lawbreakers. Wake up, America. Someone is giving away our country. Someone is betraying the interests of the American people. The perpetrators of this crime want low wages for, uh, low wages for, for the benefit of business, and they want political pawns for the benefit of the liberal left. This legislation will make a bad situation that we all know exists in this country. It'll make it dramatically worse. Is this what the American people are calling for when they want comprehensive immigration reform? They want something that will make it worse than we have it today? I don't understand how we can stand and let this happen to our country. It is up to us to make sure that it doesn't. This legislation is a declaration of war on the American middle class. And not only will this legislation increase illegal immigration, a clause in the bill will create a rush to the border. Section 601 H5 states that anyone arrested trying to cross in, into our country who then claims to have formerly lived in the United States will be allowed to apply for a Z visa, which means they can be approved in one day. This is a mind-boggling incentive for fraud. Who wouldn't want to come across the border on the chance that they could bluff their way 
into getting amnesty and becoming eligible for all our government programs and eligible for the jobs that should be going to Americans. Expect to hear ballyhoo about the tough enforcement mechanisms and the, quote, triggers built into this bill. But don't believe it. It's just so much more fraud, more flim-flam. The triggers and other schemes in this bill are a farce. There is no reason these safeguards against illegal immigration have not already been implemented. They are now simply being used as a ruse to disguise the one goal of the elite, and that is to legalize the status of those millions who are already here illegally and leading tens of millions more to come here. The bill calls for 18,000 Border Patrol agents. That's one of these claims that why we have to support the bill. We're going to get 18,000 Border Patrol agents. But we already have 15,000 Border Patrol agents. And in the Intelligence Reform and Terrorism Prevention Act of 2004, it's required that there be 2,000 new Border Patrol agents each year through 2010. So this is simply smoke and mirrors. What this new legislation does is simply reiterate hiring uh, mandates that are already in the system, already mandated by law. This bill simply takes credit for the hard work that's already been, been done. Of course, they're doing that because, again, it's a cover for their attempt to legalize the status of 15 to 20 million illegals and, yes, to unleash a flood of millions more to come into our country. On another level, how does anyone expect to actually meet the goal of increasing the ranks of the Border Patrol when this administration throws Border Patrol agents into prison and gives immunity to alien drug smugglers? This administration has lost the confidence of the Border Patrol. And I submit at this time a statement by the Border Patrol Agents uh, Council opposing this legislation. I'd like to put this into the record at this point, Mr. Chairman, or Mr. Speaker. As we deliberate on this, thank you. As we deliberate this bill, it behooves us to remember that Border Patrol agents Ramos and Campione are at this very moment languishing in solitary confinement in a federal prison. These heroic border guards one, a 10-year veteran who is up to be Border Patrol Agent of the Year, another five-year veteran. These people are putting their lives on the line for us on a daily basis for years, interdicted a drug smuggler one day. This drug smuggler was transporting over a million dollars worth of narcotics into our country. Yet, when all was said and done and the, and the, the uh, drug smuggler had escaped, but his drugs were, were interdicted and, and seized, this administration turned what may have been just administrative paperwork and literally not things not reported right on paper, mistakes that may or may not have been made by the agents. And I think that after, after looking at this, there weren't mistakes. But if there were, it was procedural mistakes, policy uh, issues there that were being dealt with on paper. They've turned that into criminal activity, charging our Border Patrol agents with felonies, putting them away for 10 to 11 years while siding with a drug smuggler, giving the drug smuggler, giving the drug smuggler immunity to testify against the border patrol agents as they turned what would be minor uh, mistakes into felonies, rather than trying to say, well, you made some mistakes in this, we'll give you immunity, however, so we can get the drug smuggler who's trying to smuggle drugs into our children and into our communities. And then there are the cases of Glimmer Hernandez and Gary Bogman. Two more law enforcement officers jailed for stopping human traffickers. Again, the book was thrown at them, the maximum penalties sought, but no prosecution of illegal criminal aliens. This indefensible inclination of the administration, of President Bush's leadership of the administration, has demoralized our protectors at the border. According to the National Border Patrol Council, the union representing 12,000 frontline Border Patrol agents, we are losing 12% of our Border Patrol agents a year right now. That amounts to 1,500 officers quitting their job every year. 
and we cannot replace the ones that we're losing. Why? Because this administration is not backing them up, because they feel that they are being abused by the people, by the government that they are serving. This is the administration that claims to be doing things in this legislation to help increase border security. This administration, this president, has a miserable record of providing border security. Our defenders have been undercut and abused by a personal protege of the President of the United States. This isn't as if President Bush doesn't know this. Attorney General Johnny Sutton, a person who's been a, a young man who's been part of his career, of the, has tied his career to the President for the last 20 years. He personally decided to prosecute these people, these law enforcement people, to the fullest extent of the law, and he has demonstrated that he will show no mercy for these Border Patrol agents and law enforcement officers like Ramos and Campione. He will not be permitted, the White House and Johnny Sutton will not permit these Border Patrol agents even to go out on bond until their appeal is heard. And it was Johnny Sutton, the U.S. Attorney and the prosecutors, that decided to prosecute them and let, the, and let the drug smugglers go, decided to throw the book at them, decided to, uh, to give gun charges against these people, even though it's their job to carry a gun in order to protect us. Well, are we expected to believe that the legislation now pursued by the president, who is behind such nonsensical policies of the border, will help make our borders more secure, help stem the out-of-control flow, flow of illegals into our country, how can we believe that that's what the purpose of this legislation is when at this time the administration is taking steps and has taken steps for the last six years to ensure that we'd have a massive flow of illegals into our country? These people didn't just materialize into our country. They've come especially from across the southern border, but across our other borders as well. And there has been no attempt by this administration to get control of the people who are entering via airports from other parts of the world people who then just overstay their visa. Well, so much. This administration has not done this and attacked our Border Patrol agents instead. So much for the idea that this legislation, backed by Senator Kennedy and the President, will in somehow strengthen the Border Patrol. The next trigger that we're told about is similarly fraudulent. The bill requires U.S. Immigration and Customs Enforcement to have the resources to detain up to 27,000 illegal aliens. How about that? But the Intelligence Reform and Terrorist Prevention Act of 2004 already requires almost double that number, 43,000 beds. Again, the bill is simply taking credit for legislation and for mandates that have already been passed into law. They are doing this to confuse the American people because they're using this as a cover to legalize the, to legalize the status of 15 to 20 million people who are here illegally, which will attract tens of millions of more. And what this bill doesn't do, and what it doesn't require, is just as significant as what it does. It does not require worksite enforcement. In an amazing loophole, it only requires the Department of Homeland Security to have the tools to conduct worksite enforcement. But nowhere in the bill does it mandate the Department of Homeland Security to actually conduct worksite enforcement. Since, since millions of illegal aliens come here looking for work, worksite enforcement is imperative if we are to discourage illegal immigration. If the Department of Homeland Security has the tools, but this so-called comprehensive package does not require them to use the tools, then we are right back in the situation that we are now. The law isn't being enforced. If it was, then the situation would not have gotten out of hand as it is today. One of the triggers in this legislation actually reduces border security. It cuts in half the border fence that Congress required to build on our southern borders. Now remember, we already passed the legislation requiring the fence. Everybody remembers that. Now, those who ignored that mandate, the President and others who ignored that mandate, are telling us we must legalize the status of millions of illegals who are in this country in order for us to get what is already required by law. 
Now, what makes us think they're now going to obey the law, the agreement that they made? What this bill doesn't do, as I say, speaks as loud as what it does. It does not require the U.S. to have a verifiable exit system. So, we know that when visiting foreigners leave the U.S., they leave the U.S. or they come into the U.S., we have no idea if they've left. Someone who's coming into the United States on a visa can overstay their visa, and we don't know if they've left. How can we seek out and deport someone who's violated their visa if we don't even know if that person is in the country or not? There's been no efforts on the part of this administration to try to fix that problem, and this bill does not mandate that. Furthermore, it does not mandate checks on legal status in order for people who are here to get benefits. So those who oversee the limited resources that we have for our own people, you know, aren't expected to verify the legal status of those seeking to obtain services or benefits that are paid by the taxpayers. Our own people are going to suffer because of this. This is the comprehensive bill that's supposed to help our people, yet it leaves us vulnerable. Illegals are waved right through the system. Let me tell you an example. What I've learned is that there are, are hundreds of thousands of illegals throughout this country who are in federal housing. Why? Because one member of their family, perhaps a child that was born here once they came to this country illegally, one child becomes a U.S. citizen. And if they have one child as a U.S. citizen, the whole family then gets to have housing benefits from the federal government. Now tell me this. Aren't the American people who are paying the bill, shouldn't they be getting this benefit rather than a family from overseas who has one, one child in this country who then supposedly becomes a citizen? What about our people who are barely making it, who can barely afford to pay their rent? They don't get the housing subsidy. What about our seniors who, who lose their, their income or they can't make it on, their, on, on what their retirement income is? They don't get the help. But illegals are being, you know, herded right through the system, given this help because they have a child that was born here. We shouldn't even permit an illegal who has a child here to think that that child is going to be a legal citizen. That itself should be taken care of in this legislation, and that isn't being taken care of. And by letting anyone who's born here become a U.S. citizen, we have again have opened up all these benefits to illegals, millions of them. And we've also invited millions to come here to make sure their children become citizens by being born here. Oh, and by the way, the triggers that we have heard about will unleash forces uh, that they claim will make things better. But what about these triggers? How are these much triggers going to be met? Well, the Homeland Security, the Secretary of Homeland Security, all he has to do to say, that, to, to say that the triggers have been pulled is simply submit a written piece of paper that claims the triggers have been met. There is no actual reduction in illegal immigration required before there's a trigger that, which brings in all of these new immigrants and, and opens up this, the rest of the legislation. There is no decrease uh, in, for example, uh, uh, those people who are uh, involved in trying to get jobs through the match file system with Social Security? No, that would be measurable. The administration uh, or a reduction in the number of illegal aliens, uh, perhaps if we had a reduction in the number of illegal aliens in our prisons that could be noted, maybe that would be a good, uh, a good uh, trigger. Or anything else that can be objectively measured. No, that might mean that we are actually making progress and that's the real reason why you have triggers. Now, the triggers are there to, to provide cover. The Secretary of the uh, Department of Homeland Security, all he has to do is simply sign a letter saying that the trigger elements are funded, in place, and in operation. So these supposed triggers, these supposed safeguards, they just have to be in place. They don't have to be having any results. And at that point, that's when the rest of this, uh, with the safeguards don't make any difference at that point. That's when the meat of the bill uh, goes into effect. The immigration spigot will be turned on by a simple piece of paper saying that something is in place, not necessarily working. And as we have seen, 
several of these triggers that I have already mentioned have already been put in place by prior legislation. The wall, building the wall, that's already been, and in, 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 expanding the Border Patrol agents, that's already been uh, mandated. So one can expect the trigger letters that we're talking about, which they say are going to hold off until the situation's under control, they will be issued almost immediately, and that's predictable. And what happens when a letter certifying that we have gotten tough with border security is issued? Well, once that, issue, that letter is issued, this legislation provides that a massive, and I mean a massive guest worker program is then launched. You get that? All these, the expanding the border patrol agents and the fence and these things, and when they just say they're in place, all of a sudden, the new guest worker program is brought out and, and launched into, the, into service. The deep pole of illegals currently here is going to be boosted by a flood of new illegals who know that if they get here, they will likely be given amnesty just like we did in 1986 and just like people are trying to do right now. The lies of the past are almost as blatant as the fraud we are now confronting. The unspoken truth is Senator Kennedy wants extremely high levels of immigration. The truth is President Bush wants extremely high levels of immigration. It hurts the well-being of the American people, but if it does, so be it. That's what Senator Kennedy and President Bush want. It isn't enough that we have 15 percent uh, a 15% unemployment rate among high school dropouts in this country, and millions of lower income Americans who are seeing their wages buy less and less. It isn't enough that immigration has reduced the wages of low skilled Americans by about $2,000 a year. Apparently, we need to push them into abject poverty by importing 400,000 guest workers a year to compete directly with Americans. Yes, 400,000, and again, now details matter. While Y visas, which are designated for those who are in this new temporary guest workers program, while they are supposed to be only temporary and only good for two years, a Y visa holder can eventually apply and get U.S. citizenship. And they can also bring their spouse and children. They can stay for two years to work. Then they return home, and then they reapply for another two-year visa. They can renew the Y visa this way for up to three times. Now, who in their right mind actually believes that these people, once they've uprooted their families, they brought all this and, and met these other requirements, that once they're here, that we will, you know, that they're just going to go back? When we have other millions of people swarming into this country because we've already given amnesty to everybody else, why won't these people in the guest worker program just melt right into the crowds? Just go right there and, uh, of course, uh, uh, they might go in and, and ask for green cards, which they can do, or they'll just melt into the system, melt into our country. Why not? Well, does this sound like it's a temporary guest workers program? The 400,000 people are going to be here temporarily? Well, who gets hurt by this nonsense? This bill allows employers to lay off American workers and replace them with Y visa holders as long as the Americans were fired 90 days before the petition of the foreign worker is filed. This is a huge subsidy to corporate America. It's both corporate welfare an attack on the paycheck of hardworking Americans who are struggling to keep afloat. We are told we must have these guest workers because Americans won't take the jobs, like in agriculture. Well, there are Americans who will pick fruit and vegetables. There are Americans. Don't tell me there aren't Americans who won't go out and do, the, do this kind of labor in the fields. In fact, I have visited uh, areas, I've mean, visited compounds where you have thousands of Americans, men, healthy men, between 18 and 40 years old, who would love to get out and earn some money. These are men in prison. These are prisoners 
who after serving their time five or to ten years, they get out with no work ethic, no money, fifty dollars in their pocket and a new suit, and people are surprised when they come back to prison after committing more crime. Well, let's put these people to work. Rather than wasting all of their time, not developing any worth ethic, let's let them earn ten, twenty thousand dollars so when they get out, they'll have some money in their hand and they'll have a work ethic and half of the money can be used to pay for their own incarceration. Now, when somebody like me says this, in Washington, D.C., they make fun of that. They make fun of me for suggesting that prisoners should pick the fruits and vegetables. Are the people making fun of me? Are they watching out for the American people? These prisoners, we, they, they'll be given a chance if we let them earn a living, come out of prison with ten or $20,000 that they've earned and they paid some restitution in the meantime. Now, we are told, so there are people who will do these jobs, even the agricultural jobs. We are told we must have guest workers because Americans won't take the jobs like agriculture and other jobs, other jobs, because the guest worker program isn't just agricultural work. Look real close, Mr. and Mrs. America. This guest worker program is, includes a lot of other jobs rather than just uh, agricultural work. Cleaning hotel rooms and, and construction workers, for example. Now, is it really true that Americans won't do that or Americans won't be nannies for, for other people's children? No, Americans will do those jobs as long as they get the pay commensurate for their work. No, they won't work like slave labor, like illegals who are pouring over the borders into our country to fill these jobs. There are millions of American women who would love to drop off their children at school at 9 o'clock in the morning and go to work at these various hotels, cleaning the rooms and changing the sheets, and then get off by 3 o'clock in order to pick up their kids at school. Yes, millions of American women would like to do that, but they're not going to work for a pittance. They're not going to work as slaves. They want benefits if they're going to work for the job. But with illegals pouring across the border, these millions of American women are left out. There are millions of American women who would love to be a nanny for some rich people who would like to have a nanny for their children, or even some people who aren't so rich who'd like to have some help with their children. But they're not going to work for a pittance. And all these rich people who have nannies from overseas and are paying them half as much as what they'd have to pay an American woman to help them, who's being helped? The rich lady or the rich woman who has the children who are being helped. Yeah, those rich people are being helped. Maybe the, 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 the immigrant, the illegal immigrant probably woman who's, being, who's helping out as a nanny, she's helped a little bit. Who's the big loser are the American women who could be earning a decent living to help their families by serving as nannies, because they are women who are mothers and they know about taking care of children. We have frozen them out of the market. We are hurting the American family. We are making sure their families don't have the extra money and that these hotel chains can pay people a pittance. The guest worker program starts at 400,000, but it can be increased. This bill allows for adjustments every six months based on market fluctuation. Is there a doubt in anyone's mind that simply allowing the number of guest workers to go up and down will not result in the number of workers going up and up and up? H-1B visas and Y visa holders will be taking the jobs of Americans, taking the jobs that Americans are willing to do, but they will be driving down wages. In Orange County, I went to a function a few years ago, and a fellow grabbed me by the arm, and he said, Congressman, I'm here to thank you. And he had a newspaper clipping when we were debating H-1B visas here on the floor of the House. I said, Congressman, I read your quote. You said if we bring in these hundreds of thousands of people on H-1B visas from India and Pakistan to work in our high-tech jobs, we're going to do nothing but depress the wages of the people in the electronics industry. He said, I was laid off, and you know what happened? I went back to get my old job back. They had paid me $80,000, and now they were offering the same job to me for $50,000. And he looked at me and he said, they said, if you don't take this, we can get somebody with an H-1B visa to take it, some Indian or Pakistani, so you better take it. And he says, and I did. He says, you know the difference, Congressman, between earning $50,000 and $80,000 is? I said, what is it? And he said, you never dream of owning your own home if you make $50,000 a year. 
We are destroying the dreams of the American people in order to what? To bring down wages so that our business elite can prosper, and yes, so that we can bring in millions of illegals into this country, millions of, of, of immigrants into this country, which the liberal left of the political spectrum thinks that they are going to use these people as pawns in their own political game. They are being exploited by the business community and exploited by the liberal left who control the Democratic Party. This is obscene. Who loses? Who loses? Yeah, the immigrants are kind of losers, even though they're a little bit better off. The American people are the losers. What happens to, them, to particular Americans uh, isn't the worst of it. Not only do we greatly expand our guest workers program, we are actually increasing chain migration, even though they're telling us this bill will, will take care of that. We are hearing from the media that the system is being moved away from chain migration to a family-based system. Uh, that is, and chain migration is a family-based system. Chain migration allows an immigrant to bring his uh, spouse and children and the sisters and brothers and in-laws, grandparents, aunts and uncles. Uh, one of the reasons uh, uh, the wait to migrate to America is so long for many people overseas is that the open slots that become open to, to immigrate here legally are going to people who are bringing their relatives over, people who may immediately not be on the dole, people who can't even support themselves, but their family members. The Senate claims this bill will move away from that. That'll point the system to a merit system, uh, to those who have skills that America needs and would be able to come into the country uh, before those relatives of those people who are already here. Sounds pretty good in theory, doesn't it? Once again, there are so many loopholes into this bill that in real the reality of this legislation is just the opposite for which it portends. The bill as written for most of the next decade will dramatically increase chain migration. Well, how is that? How? Right now, chain migration is limited to 112,000 per year. This bill increases that, get into this, chain migration is 112,000 a year. This bill would increase that number to 440,000 per year until the current backlog of applications is filled. That backlog will take eight years, get that, eight years to fix eight years before the point system we're being told about will come into play. Eight years and a fourfold increase in chain migration during those eight years. Does anyone here really think that eight years from now we will implement a merit system for chain migration? By then we'll have 50 to 100 million new illegal immigrants here who have swarmed into our country and we will be in the midst of chaos and confusion. One might reasonably hope after granting amnesty, establishing a new guest worker program, increasing chain migration and requiring trigger, me trigger mechanisms that already are in place and, we aren't, and aren't needed, that this bill might at least crack down on illegal immigrant criminals. Well, don't hold your breath. This bill re imposes significant obstacles to removing dangerous alien gang members from our country. This bill also narrowly defines criminal gangs so that many small gangs will be excluded from the bill. Further, the government must prove bad intent on the part of the alien gang member in order to remove the alien gang member. All a gang member has to do is sign a piece of paper saying he has renounced his gang affiliation and he can then get a Z visa. He is then getting a visa that will permit him legal status here, even though he's illegal and part of a criminal gang. Of course, a gang member would never lie to us about that, would he? I guess not. Why are we putting out this welcome mat for criminals? This is madness. Further, the bill weakens the law involving passport fraud and misuse. It actually reduces the punishment for illegal reentry by criminals into this country. The so-called comprehensive bill weakens restrictions that are already in place. And shockingly enough, this bill does not make engaging in a terrorist activity proof that an immigrant is not of good moral character. The good moral character, of course, being a requirement to get a visa. And in the final, 
in the final uh, insult, let's look at the highly touted electronic employment eligibility verification, the system allowing employers to make sure that the employees they hire are eligible for employment. It's a fraud. Why? First, because the bill permits the entire system to be changed by the Department of Homeland Security Secretary and the Social Security Administrator. Second, while an illegal alien is appealing a finding of non-eligibility for employment, so if he's found not to be eligible for employment, while he's appealing that, he can appeal it administratively, and then he can appeal it in the courts. The illegal can't be fired while he's appealing that, that decision. That could go on for years. And so the mechanism is irrelevant in real life scenarios. This bill would make that uh, mechanism to check irrelevant. Forget whatever requirements are in the bill. There are over 40 pages of such requirements, such as, but in section 302 of the bill, the Department of Homeland Security, Secretary and the Social Security Administrator are given authority to change any requirement. Any of the supposed tough mandates can be administratively simply done and deleted simply by publishing these changes in the Federal Registrar. What is the purpose of defining a system for page after page in this legislation and then saying, by the way, if you don't like it or get too much heat from greedy employers or a confused press, don't worry, you can change it. It can be changed easily without having to go back to the Congress. This is not laying the foundation for meeting serious challenges. This is creating a phony facade to make people think that something else is happening. And the final slap, this bill legalizes in-state tuition for illegal aliens. If your child goes 100 miles to the next state, he or she must pay for out-of-state tuition, but an illegal alien who was smuggled 2,000 miles by their parents into this country can go to school cheaply and on your tax dollar. This much vaunted compromise that we're talking about, this comprehensive bill, is in reality an amnesty for everyone, a new guest worker program so your employer can throw you out of work, vastly expanding chain, it vastly expands chain migration, it guts enforcement provisions, and makes it easier for illegal alien criminals to stay. If this is a compromise, I shudder to think what the other bill looked like. It would be more honest for the Senate to draft up a bill declaring war on the American people. Robert Rector from the Heritage Foundation estimates the cost of out of control, uh, the out of control flow of immigration will be over two and a half trillion dollars. That's trillion dollars with a T. Baby boomers retiring and the looming crisis in Medicare and Social Security are all upon us. What rational person thinks that we can take on another $2.5 trillion in obligations and not see the utter bankruptcy of our country? And what rational person thinks we can absorb tens of millions of new illegals who will be attracted to America once we legalize the status of this bunch who are here now? And this goes deeper than economics. Why are we officially endorsing the existence of a permanent class of illegal residents, because when those 50 to 100 million people get here, it'll be over. A group of people who are not citizens, who have neither obligation nor benefits of being citizens, will be in our country forever. It will change the nature of the United States. It is changing the nature of the United States. I strongly support legal immigration. Legal immigrants are the, are the bulwark of our economy and our society. They are the most patriotic of Americans, but they have come here to be Americans. It is, they have come here, legal immigrants have come here to make sure they're healthy, yes, and that they can work and, and, and they can actually uh, take care of themselves rather than be wards of the state. They've met these obligations. They want to speak English, but they have come here with the premise, everyone comes here who comes to our country they know, these legal immigrants know, that they have to give up their allegiance to their old country and to truly become Americans, and they want to become Americans. I am proud of those legal immigrants who support me in my district. They deserve the rights, and their family deserve the rights of every American, and no one should ever interpret this battle against illegal immigration with any attack on those wonderful American citizens who are here by choice. 
and who have come here legally and come here through the process. We have a huge group of illegal immigrants here now and a growing number who refuse to renounce their, alleg their allegiance to their old country and to their old ways, but loudly insist on being granted the economic benefits of living in this country. This is a prescription for disaster. For disaster, legal immigration, legal immigration is a controlled process. We take in more than all the rest of the world combined. We have more legal immigration into our country than all the other countries of the world combined. And we can be proud of that. But it hasn't been enough for those who rake in higher profits when wages go down, or for those in the liberal left who want to fundamentally change America and believe a mass of new immigrants will help them do it. America is a wondrous dream. We are letting an elite clique of capitalists and leftists, as unholy an alliance that is, to turn this dream into, an, into a nightmare. The American people need to step forward with a righteous rage. They are being betrayed. President Bush and Senator Kennedy have an agenda that will destroy America's middle class. Those who sign on to this legislation are not, not representing the interests of the American people. If we do not speak up, the Americans, the patriots, both legal immigrants and people who are born here, if we do not step up, there will be another 50 to 100 million people here from abroad, and they will, live, they will live here a decade from now, and it will be a different country. We will have lost our country. Yet those supporting this invasion of America posture themselves as morally superior. Cities declare sanctuary for illegals, these illegals who have broken our laws. These cities who are declaring sanctuary never ask who's being hurt. They think they're helping people. Well, it's not just the American people who are being hurt. It's those people who are waiting in line overseas. Why should the person who's come here illegally, why should they, people who've come here illegally get the benefits? Why should the people who run the sanctuaries be on the side of those people who cheated and cut in line in front of all of those hundreds of millions of people who are waiting overseas? The sanctuary cities are treating the good people who would immigrate here legally and are waiting to do so as a bunch of saps. Any time that we reward illegal conduct, and these people who've come here illegally and we, we say we're reaching out to them, we're gonna try to help them, you, what you're really doing is hurting the people overseas. You're hurting someone else who is a decent, hardworking person who would come here. So anybody who offers sanctuary and is reaching out to illegals is doing nothing but hurting other people overseas. Of course, they're hurting the American people. That's not enough to tell them that. But they're also hurting these poor people overseas. These sanctuary cities contribute. They're contributing to the breakdown of our society. This holier-than-thou attitude is not humanitarian. It's phony. Those posers are rarely willing to sacrifice their own resources. They want to have to spend taxpayer dollars to take care of their humanitarian instincts. The Catholic Church, for example, demands that illegals be given health care and education benefits. Well, let the Catholic Church, if they're serious, pay for the bill for the illegals. They can do it. They can provide schools and health care. There are a lot of Catholic properties that could be sold to pay for the health care. No, they want the American people, other people, to pay for it. The taxpayers. That's not humanitarianism. That's not Christian charity. And then what happens when the next wave gets here? 50 to 100 million illegals. First and foremost, the American people should be loyal to each other. We must care for each other. This is not hate-mongering. This is not uh, being against people. We are Americans are of every race, every religion, every ethnic background. We need to be compassionate to each other and to each other's families. We must not drain the limited resources that we have for the Americans in order to give it to other people who've come here illegally because we must first care for our own people. That's not hate. That's, that's the right kind of love you have in your heart for your family and your neighbors. This is not humanitarianism when we give this away to others and encourage millions more to come here. It will cause the collapse of our system and all of us will be worse off. The immigration legislation being foisted upon us will create a different America with a permanent alien underclass. People who may or may not share our democratic values and may or may not be loyal to America's ideals. It's time for patriots to act to stand up and be heard, 
Be angry. Call on all elected officials to be held accountable. This supposed comprehensive immigration bill must be defeated, and I would call on my fellow members of Congress and the American people to join in this fight. We need every patriot to be activated now to save America. And I yield back the balance of my time.